Welcome to Green Cucumbers 101. I'm Brittany Demezier, one of your Food Systems Program Coordinators with the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Office in Dubuque County, and today we're going to talk about cucumbers. So fresh cucumbers and homemade pickles are one of my favorite summer snacks. So today we're gonna to talk about how to grow cucumbers, how to uh, produce a successful crop, and how to avoid pest and disease problems before they happen. So without further ado, let's get growing. So there's two different types of cucumbers that you'll find as you're shopping for seeds, either in the catalog or on the seed rack. One, you're going to need to make a decision if you wanna grow a slicing type cucumber or a pickling type cucumber. So I've got all three varieties here. The first one we're gonna talk about is a pickling cucumber. So pickling cucumbers are typically a little bit smaller and tend to be a little bit more spiny than your slicing cucumbers. This one's actually a little bit large for a pickling cucumber. This is about five inches in length. Typically, you'll harvest them somewhere between three to five inches. So this is the upper end of that mark. Um, slight, or pickling cucumbers are going to have a smaller diameter, so they make better pickles when you're slicing them up to put on sandwiches, um, and also can pickle them you know, whole as one uh, large cucumber pickle. So that is your pickling cucumber. The next ones I'm gonna talk about are slicing cucumbers, and there's two main types of slicing cucumbers. One's your typical market cu cucumber, which is gonna be about eight inches in length. It's gonna be a little bit wider around, so you're gonna have thicker slices, uh, which are better for fresh eating. The next type is an English type cucumber, and you can see this one's a lot longer and thinner than this one here. So this is gonna be wider around the base. This one's gonna be a little bit thinner, and usually has some ribbing in and amongst the flesh um, on the outside skin. So these are two different types. A lot of times you'll see this type more often grown in greenhouse or high tunnel situations, uh, but you can easily grow it in your home garden as well. The other thing that you're gonna wanna take a look at is if you have a bush or a vining type cucumber. So vining type cucumbers are going to be longer uh, vines and take up a little bit more space than your bush type cucumbers. Bush type cucumbers are hybrids, uh, but they do take up less space, so about two to three feet uh, per plant is what you're going to need for a bush variety and six to eight feet for a traditional vining cucumber. So I've got some seed packets here so we can take a look and see uh, how you would tell the different types of seeds from uh, the packets. So we've got three packets here. The first one is going to be our straight eight. That is, if I flip it over, that's going to be an heirloom variety. So what that's going to tell me here is it's going to be a vining type cucumber. This one says it's gonna be best harvested at eight inches long, so it's gonna be similar to our uh, market cucumber. This is gonna be a good slicing cucumber. The next one we're gonna take a look at is this pick a bush hybrid. This is an organic variety, which doesn't tell us if it is um, going to be a vining or a bush type, but it will say hybrid, so we know that there is some hybrid characteristics in this one. So this is going to be, it says best harvested when three to six inches long, so that's going to be your pickling type cucumber. It says it is a semi-bush variety, so it's not gonna be quite as big of a plant as a vining cucumber, but it is going to be uh, a little bit larger than a trip, typical bush type cucumber. Um, this is, that's part of, so that's part of what the hybrid is, as well as this disease resistance here at the bottom. The final one we're gonna take a look at is this bush champion. Obviously, this is a bush type of cucumber. We'll flip it over on the backside. And you can see this is a, sp it's a space saving plant, an abundant crop of bright green, eight to 12 inch fruit. So this is again gonna be your market type cucumber. It's mosaic resistant, so we know this is a hybrid as well. Another thing that you might find as you're browsing through seed descriptions in either catalogs or on the backside of your seed packet is whether your cucumber is going to be monoecious, gyonecious, or parthenocarpic. So those are pretty big words that we don't use every day, so what do they mean? Well, this is the type of cucumber that you're going to get and how it is bred and pollinated. So typically cucumbers are monoecious, which means they have male and female flowers. So here's a picture of some both flowers. You've got our male flower over on this side, and then our female flower over here. And the way we can tell it's female, obviously, is because it has this small little cucumber on the back side of the uh, plant, or the flower. So if this gets pollinated, the cucumber will get bigger. If it doesn't get pollinated, the cucumber will kind of shrivel up and die, and obviously isn't going to produce a fruit for us. So typically the male flowers are going to pop out first, followed by the female flowers, and they're usually about 50-50 in um, 
number with monoecious varieties of cucumbers. The next type of cucumber is going to be gyonaceous. This actually favors female flowers. So there's going to be predominantly female flowers on a gyonaceous plant, which means you're going to get more cucumbers. Uh, the one thing you need to keep in mind though with gyonaceous cucumbers is that there needs to be enough male flowers in order to pollinate the influx of female flowers. So typically if you get a gyonaceous variety, what you'll see is there will be about 10% monoecious seeds mixed into that blend. So typically if you're getting these in a packet, you'll see it might be a different color, they might be dyed differently. Um, this is just to ensure that there are enough male flowers to pollinate all the females that are present. Um, but it will produce uh, significantly more than your traditional monoecious type. The final type is going to be parthenocarpic, and that's just a fancy word for seedless. These cucumbers don't need to be pollinated and they don't produce a seed. But one thing to keep in mind, if you are producing a parthenocarpic cucumber or seedless cucumber, you don't wanna grow a standard variety next to it or even anywhere in the, the vicinity as well because if it, a parthenocarpic cucumber pollinates with a standard variety, either monoecious or gyonaceous, you're going to have seeds in your cucumber and usually that's not what you want if you've planted a parthenocarpic cucumber. So those are some things to consider as you're shopping for cucumber seeds, either in the store or online. So the next thing we're gonna do is take a look at how to start your cucumber seeds. So cucumbers really like warm weather, so they won't wanna be planted outside until after the danger of frost has passed. But we can start them inside about three to four weeks ahead of the season, uh, which is about the end of April for us here in Eastern Iowa or Dubuque County. So you'll want to start your cucumber seeds, unlike our tomatoes and peppers that we had started before in plastic pots, you're gonna to wanna to start your cucumber seeds in something like this compostable peat pot or those little peat pellets or something that is going to be easily broken down or is a plantable pot. Cucumbers don't like their roots disrupted, so this is ideal for planting outside if you're starting cucumbers. So we're gonna go ahead and just fill up our cucumber or our pot here with some potting soil. Go ahead and level it off, shake it down. Things don't tend to settle as much in these peat pots, but we're gonna press it down a little bit and just top it off. <clears throat> then we're gonna go ahead and plant those cucumber seeds down about an inch deep. So I'm just gonna use my finger today since these seeds are a little bit bigger. And see, I went down to about my first knuckle so you're gonna to wanna to go decently deep down, but not super deep. So I'm gonna use this straight eight variety. Pour these cucumber seeds out. You can see they're kind of a larger type seed. If this was a gyonaceous variety, you might see some blue or green dyed seeds. Those are going to be your male flowers or your monoecious plants within your gyonaceous mix. But this here is uh, simply a monoecious mix, so we don't have any of those different colors included in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just plant one seed per thing. You could do two if you really wanted to. Um, and put that, cover them up. Then we'll go ahead and water them in, and then we'll be able to watch them grow up and uh, be able to transplant them outside in about three to four weeks. So these plants here have been growing for about two weeks and you can see we've got our cotyledons out and we're starting to get our first true leaf at about two weeks after planting. So it's uh, starting to get a little bit bigger and you'll probably have about four true leaves on your cucumbers when you're ready to transplant them outside. So the earliest I'd transplant them outside is somewhere mid-May, so around the 15th is a good target date. The last date practically that you can plant cucumbers from seed in Iowa is around July 20th. So somewhere between that May and July timeframe is when you're gonna wanna plant those seeds outside. So as we're looking to transplant these cucumbers outside, there's two different methods that you can use, either rows or the more traditional hills. So we're gonna talk about rows first. So rows, you'll wanna keep your rows about four to five feet apart. Um, and within the row, you're gonna plant those cucumbers about 12 to 18 inches apart, just to make sure that they've got enough room. If you're planting in rows, it's a little easier to train those cucumbers up a trellis. So if you're thinking of doing that, rows is probably your best method. 
Hills, on the other hand, are gonna be a little bit different. So the first step if you're doing planting your cucumbers in hills is you're gonna to wanna to build your hill. Your hills are gonna be about six feet apart from each other, so they're going to be pretty f uh, far spaced. So you wanna build your hill about two feet in diameter and then about six inches high. So I've got a little ruler here. You can see this is about six to eight inches high. So you're gonna mound up quite a bit of soil. Uh, make that about two feet around and then you'll go ahead and place your plants in that hill. So it's recommended if you're planting these from seed that you plant them a uh, five to a hill and then thin them down to three. Since we're starting ours from transplants, we're going to just focus on um, planting three to a hill. So these are about three inches apart here on our hill and that's uh, about the spacing that you're going to want for uh, your cucumber transplants. So now that your cucumbers have grown all season long, it's ready to harvest. So you'll want to harvest your cucumbers when they get to be about the right length for the particular type that you planted. So if you planted your pickling cucumbers, uh, keeping them within that three to five inch length. If you let them grow longer than that, they tend to get bitter um, and aren't as desirable for eating. Same thing with your uh, slicing cucumbers or English cucumbers. This is about the right length that you'll want to harvest and you don't want it to go over that. You're probably going to need to harvest your cucumbers about every day once the season starts. So you'll want to go out and just take a look and cut those fruit that are about the correct harvest length. For storage, you'll want to store your cucumbers in a nice cool place. Uh, if you're going to need to keep them for a while, it's a good idea to wrap them in saran wrap or plastic or a kind of a sealed container so that they don't get mushy or moldy on you. Uh, if you start to see misshapen fruit in your uh, cucumber patch, that's usually a, resort, a result of poor pollination. So that might look like something like curling ends on your cucumbers uh, or something like that. It's easy. This is a, another thing that can happen if you have cucumber beetles and they eat the flower off before you start to see, uh, before it gets pollinated. So you might see some of that if you have insect damage. So it's a good thing to keep an eye out for. And if you start to see some of that misshapen fruit, going ahead and taking uh, corrective action at that point. Now we're going to take a look at some common disease and pest issues that you may find when growing cucumbers in your home garden. The first one we're gonna look at is this one here, the striped cucumber beetle. This is a really common pest in cucumber crops in the Midwest and can cause significant damage to your crops if not caught early on. The beetles look like this. They're pretty small, uh, about a fifth inch in length and are yellow and black in color and will have three distinct black lines running down their back. Damage can show up really early in the season with larvae completely eating cucumber transplants. So obviously that's not ideal. Uh, but later in the season, damage can look a little bit more like this, where adult beetles will defoliate the leaves and flowers of the cucumber, and the cucumbers themselves can even show signs of girdling. Uh, older plants can survive high levels of defoliation, but beetles can also transmit bacteria wilt through their feeding, which if once plants are infected with bacteria wilt, they're not going to recover and you'll essentially lose your crop. So this insect can also affect muskmelons, squash, and pumpkins. So if you're growing any of those crops, you'll wanna keep an eye out for this pest as well so that it doesn't transfer over. Uh, cucumber beetles can overwinter in the soil, so you can prevent that by removing plant debris from your garden area in the early spring. Uh, row covers can be used to reduce chances of beetles affecting your young plants, but once plants begin to produce flowers and buds, row covers should be removed to facilitate that pollination. The next disease that we're going to take a look at is powdery mildew. This is a common concern with cucumber plants as well as others in the cucurbit family like muskmelons, squash, gourds, watermelons, and pumpkins. Uh, damage from this disease looks a little bit like this, just like the name. It has a white powdery spores on the top of the leaves of the plants and it often shows up in wet and humid conditions like we have here in eastern Iowa during the summer. Older leaves will show symptoms first, but the wind can blow spores from infected leaves to others fairly easily, so it usually affects most every leaf on the plant. Although powdery mildew primarily infects leaves and vines, it doesn't typically affect the cucumbers themselves, but your plant will probably produce fewer and smaller fruit if it does have powdery mildew on it. The best way to really manage this disease is to plant resistant varieties and provide good air circulation around the plants through proper spacing, staking of plants, and weed control. 
So thanks for joining us today for Growing Cucumbers 101. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about how to grow cucumbers so you can have a successful crop this season. Feel free to reach out during the growing season if you have any questions at our office here at Dubuque County Extension at 563-583-6496 and we're happy to help you out. So thanks for joining us today and happy growing.